Well, before we get into today's video, I'm going to let you guys know that next month, Patreon winner, I'm going to be flying you down or around, or if you're in Texas, I don't know. But we're going to go to the Yamamoto Ranch together. We're going to stay out there. We're going to fish on those lakes. Gary might be there. He might not. I don't really know. But if you're interested in possibly winning a trip to go fish in the Yamamoto Ranch with me, check the link in the description. It's Just click on the Patreon link. Read. It's really, really simple. So other than that, let's, uh, let's get into this video, guys. Okay, so the video that we're going to be going over today is actually like my top five go-to summertime baits. All right, now this is a question that I keep getting asked, so I think it's time for me to finally do this video. Now, everything we're going to go over today is going to be linked in the description. It's going to have links directly to the baits that I'm using. I usually never do this, but I, I feel like this is going to help you guys out quite a bit. So just, just take a look down below and uh, let's get into this. So the first one I'm going to go with is a 6XD. Uh, this one will dive, see I actually ride it on the bill, 17 or 19 plus. You know, when you're digging through your crankbait box, you're like, man, I don't know what, which depth this one is. You just look at it real quick, tie it on. I, I, don't, I, I fish deep a lot and I still have a hard time remembering what the depths are. So that's a pretty good tip for you guys. I'm actually using 12 pound fluorocarbon on this, on, this, on this 6XD right now. Using 12 pound fluorocarbon, I'm throwing a 711 glass composite rod. Now, the reason why I'm throwing such a long rod is because it's able to get that whipping motion I want and just, you know what I mean? It's like that tip bends a lot. So you can cast this sucker like 50 yards, no problem. Probably farther to be honest with you. Now I'm gonna be pairing this with a, with a lower gear ratio reel. On this one is actually a uh, six three to one. I would like to actually be in the fives when I'm using a deep diving crank. Now what you really want to do, which, like I'm telling you guys right now, you want to make sure you change out the treble hooks on this sucker. Now, the reason why I say that is Strike King doesn't really have very good treble hooks, like at all. The way you check to make sure that the hooks you're putting on are not too big, you take the crankbait and you lay it like flat on its back and then you just take the hooks and you push them together and see if they get hung on each other. If they get hung on each other, clearly you need to change, but if not, and they're good to go. That's that's literally it. So the next one is actually going to be a Carolina rig. We're sticking deep right now. This is about as long as leader as I like. Yeah, it's about as long as my arm. So you're probably looking at about a foot and a half to two foot leader. That's what I like. Right now I got to set it up for like baby brush hogs. So I got it with a you got it. You got your your leader attached to your swivel like always. You got the clacker. You got the bead. And you got to wait. I always 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 go with a half ounce minimum. And most of the time I'm throwing three quarter of an ounce. So to be honest with you, I'm pairing this with a, not a very long rod, to be honest with you. I kind of like it, it's a seven foot one. This is, this, is, this is pretty key right here. You want a heavy, I like a heavy rod. Heavy, extra fast. Now, the reason why I like the heavy is because you go to a medium heavy, then you're gonna be stuck with like too flimsy of a rod. So when you set the hook, it's not gonna work. So I like a heavy rod with a fast tip on my Carolina setups. All right, all right, number three is just a straight up Texas rig. I got a brush hog on right now. I got a 5 16 ounce bullet weight. Uh, it's a four odd hook. And you know, I'm, I mean, I, a lot of these reels, like say for instance, that Carolina rig, it's with a 6 3 to 1. This one's a 6 3 to 1. Uh, they're gonna either have 12 to 15 pound uh, fluorocarbon. The Carolina rig's gonna have probably 12 because it's going down deeper or 15. I mean, it's not really that big of a deal, but I'm using 12 to 15 all summer long on all my baits or all my rods, excuse me. And this is Texas rig rod. This one is a 7 foot 2 medium heavy extra fast. So if I were to use this medium heavy as a Carolina rig rod, I would not be enjoying my day halfway through the day because I wouldn't have enough backbone to set the hook with. 25 foot of water, just, you just want to make sure you have, I like a heavy rod myself, you can test it out. All right, number four on the list, this is that uh, top water kind of action. <sighs> so, what you want to make sure with this top water, guys, so this is a spook, I forgot to tell you guys, it's a spook junior, I've caught a ton of giant bass on spooks, so I'm throwing this on a seven foot moderate action, moderate fast action glass composite rod, because it's got a fast tip and it's got a little bit of give, uh, so when they, you, when they take the this bait in their mouth, you want them to inhale it and then kind of go from there. So I'm throwing this with monofilament. This is like one of the only rods on my boat that has monofilament on it, and it's my spook rod, and nothing comes off. The spook stays on this rod all year and does not really ever come off. Six three to one, shorter rod, tipping that rod, or you're uh, working that bait back to the boat or to the shore, your rod tip's not hitting the water. That's pretty ideal. Just so everybody knows, the reason why you use monofilament on those is because monofilament doesn't sink fluorocarbon. will pull the nose of that spook down, so when you go to pull, or twitch the rod tip, you're really just digging it in the water until you get a couple more pops. 
monofilament is always needed for spooks. All right, so last but not least is gonna be the Senko. Now I know a lot of people are gonna say, oh, the Senko always. All right, so the, the, what I would actually be using for like a Senko, that's, that's my number five bait. It's gonna be a seven foot two, medium heavy, fast action uh, rod. You know, it's, it's like the same as my Texas rig rod. It's the same kind of deal. I would go with, this is like one of my all time favorite baits. Uh, color wise, black and blue, you cannot beat it. Use a, Mr. Yamamoto says you use a three aught extra wide gap hook with it when you're pitching weightless. Just recently, I'm really, really, really getting into wacky rigging these things. I throw it with a spinning setup on really light braid, like 20 pound braid, and I'll throw like a 12 pound leader if I'm in clear water. If I'm murky rawdy, I don't care. I'll keep it straight braid and they don't care either. Yeah, and then I use a wacky rig tool, uh, which you can also find below. Wacky rig tool, O-rings for wacky rigs, of course. So, other than that guys, you know what, I just kind of wanted to get this out to you guys for the summertime baits because a lot of people have been asking me for it. I really hope you guys kind of enjoy this. I know it's quick, it's kind of fast, and it, hopefully you kind of learn something. So, if you guys are new to the channel, we got videos every single day at 9 a.m. Every day at 9 a.m. Other than that guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Remember to follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, Periscope, Twitter, everything's Lunkers TV. And especially if you want to know what I'm doing throughout my day, follow me on Snapchat because I just do random stuff on it. So. Other than that, I'll, uh, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow.